Hi, welcome to the Bone Boot Camp podcast. We are here with the inaugural version of the podcast or episode of the podcast, and I'm really excited to introduce somebody from my past. Katie Lush was the person who trained me in Pilates. So I think it's super fitting that Katie would be my first official guest. So let, without further ado, let's get talking. And I'd like Katie to just introduce herself as, um, as she chooses. So go right <laughs> ahead. I choose. Well, thank you. This is super duper exciting. Yeah. Congrats on having a podcast. I know how much work it is. I don't have one, yeah. but I listen to a lot of them. So yeah. Um, okay. I mean, it's so funny. We have so much history. It's like, where do I begin? Um, <laughs> Uh, let's see. I have owned a Pilates studio in downtown Chicago for, I think we're going on 17 years. And um, somewhere in that time frame, I don't even know how we got hooked up. I think you were still living in Illinois at the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, I don't know. You came to the studio. I don't even remember. How did you find it? Do you remember? I was, at the time, I thought um, physical mind was like who I wanted That's to, right. who I wanted to certify with. Now, of course, you and I both went on to get <laughs> other certifications. Yeah, we both defected, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. So you must have found through some sort of like search through physical mind for like a teacher yeah. certification yeah. course. Yeah. So I taught through physical mind for, I think, like six or seven years, taught lots and lots of students. Um, it's really fun because many years later, I'm reconnecting with so many of them. And yeah, we went through the whole Pilates certification. Um, we attempted to go through some of the gyrotonic yeah, certification, I right? I know we did like, <laughs> I think we did the pre-training and then, and then I think you ended up moving shortly thereafter. I did. So, I did. okay. So, okay. So memory serves correctly, but yeah. Yes. So yeah, so I still teach both. I still teach Pilates and gyrotonic, but then um, you and I both sort of migrated into this natural movement yeah. world. And so I continued on with a certification through Nutritious Movement, right. through Katie Bo and restorative exercise specialty specialist. And yeah, it has now transformed the way that I teach and it's the foundation right. of everything that I teach. And I think you are right alongside me on that. Yeah, I I just took a slight different angle. I did that first year with you, with Katie Bowman, right. where I did the biomechanics portion. Mm -hmm. And then I angled off a little more towards um, core and pelvic floor with someone else. But mm -hmm. we've been in, on this same path. We both got out of our big old sneakers and <laughs> right <laughs> and switched to more more natural shoes and we're both barefoot a lot more although it's pretty easy when you're a movement teacher to stay barefoot which that's is true that's a great true. benefit mm -hmm. but this sort of brings me to what I really wanted to talk to you about and that is natural movement um, functional movement, nutritious mm -hmm. movement. Um, and how do you layer that into the everyday life? Because I think that's really a lot of the foundation of what you teach. Yeah. So I learned a lot of anatomy and whatnot, physiology in college. Like I was a ballet major. So I learned a lot of that. And then I learned some applicable anatomy and biomechanics, what I thought was biomechanics in like mm -hmm. the Pilates certifications, gyrotonic, not so much. So I thought I knew everything, right? right. <laughs> like ego, you've been doing it for we a long time. You kinda, you've gone to a million workshops, you hear the same thing over and over again. And I thought I sort of knew it all. And then yeah. I was introduced to this gentleman called Philip Beach at a um, yeah. balanced body conference. And I took it kind of on the arm of a friend. <laughs> it's so awful. So it was a pre-conference and we walked into the conference room and all the chairs were stacked on the edges of the room. And I was like, where are the chairs? And I like pulled <laughs> a chair out, sat it down and like sat in it. And I was like the only person in the room who did that. Well, come to find out Philip Beach is like a huge natural movement um, yeah. advocate, trains Olympic athletes out in New Zealand. and. 
one of his foundations is like floor sitting. <laughs> and so <laughs> I was like such the jerk who like sat in the chair, like, where's the chair? Somebody didn't set up yeah. the room. So I like slowly slid to the floor and like kind of put yeah. my elbow on the chair and then took my nose <laughs> and like kind of slowly moved away from the chair. It was very humiliating, but it was very humbling. And just, he, he talks a lot about embryology. So it was a little bit over my right. head, but the next, portion of his workshop was really about archaeological arc well, how do you even say it it's anthropological yep. dimensions and forms and so kind of taking it back to the hunter gatherer days of like how people originally moved right. so he had some sort of like fun really simple like movements and a lot of it was like some mini squatting things and as right. i was doing them i was like how am I unable to do this? Like, it was one of those like light bulb moments that you yeah. have in a workshop where I was like, I'm so missing the mark on so many moves that I am incapable of doing. And having been a movement teacher forever, yeah, I was so humbled and was like, ooh, I really need to look into this. So I did and then found Katie Bowman as a result. Right. And it was one holiday, I was in Kansas at my in-laws and I literally just read like every blog and it's just like bombs were going off in my brain of like, right. whoa, I really don't know a lot. And everything that I'd already learned felt um, inaccurate in a lot of ways. Right. So, right. so I kind of did like a pause, like, ooh, okay. I need a moment to like reevaluate everything that I've learned. And so that's kind of what I did. And that's why I went through the certification. So, so Katie Bowman is quite brilliant. She is this biomechanist. I've studied some other biomechanists at this point now too, but I think starting just with the alignment points being on a, a specific grid that in even my Pilates certification, there were different choices made and right. tinkering with her choices brought about very different results than what I was mm -hmm. taught in my previous training. And the results felt better in my body. I saw better results. And then as I was practicing it on my clients, I was like, oh, this is something like fundamentally different. And so my clients, like all, a lot of us have, have um, turn into my guinea pigs <laughs> and they lovingly stuck with me while I just like tinkered with a lot of her work with them, even through the certification, which you're not really supposed to do, but I kind of like needed it to be proven. And as I went through her corrective exercises and her alignment points, I was like, oh, I'm seeing some really profound changes in my clients that I wasn't necessarily seeing having taught them Pilates for like 15 years. Right. So that's kind of where I am today. Like just having learned the work, absorbed the work, tried the work on clients, seeing the results. And I feel like, yeah, it has now become the foundation. I don't mind adding Pilates choreography on top of it, but I want my clients to have this as their foundation to then go do their other things, ride their bike, take a walk, garden. Right. I want this to be where they kind of have their springboard from. Yeah. And taking that, into their everyday life. Yes. I, I've been following your exercise advent that <laughs> Katie <laughs> Bowman initiated. And I think it's a brilliant thing. I actually did it as a teacher a few years ago. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that and how you're really showing people how to get nutritious movement around the house? Around the house. I think that's one of the coolest aspects that I learned where I am a recovering gym addict and I, the fancier the gym, the better, the crazier the class, the more I loved it. And I really did think, even though I was a movement teacher, let's say on the weekends, I could like sit on the couch for, you know, 10, 12 hours of the day and then like have my one workout class for one hour. And I thought it like negated me sitting around and watching like sex in the city all day long. So. Um, so Katie Bowman has this concept called like stacking your life. I sometimes call it like, right. like layering your life. And it's just taking the things that we need to get done in our daily routine anyways, like going and getting the mail, right? The mailbox is down the street. So you go outside, you, you know, wear your minimal shoes or you go barefoot. So then you get some like, you know, extra foot mobility. 
you're going outside. So you're getting some fresh air, you're getting some sunlight, you're getting some like vitamin nature and you're getting a little walk-in and then you're carrying, you know, your envelopes or whatever, your mail back. And so you're getting, you know, a little grip strength. Maybe if it's a package you're carrying, you get a little bicep work. And so you're just thinking of ways of how to like layer in everything you need to get done. So they don't become compartmentalized, which is really how I was living my life. It's like when I had my son, it felt very weird to like leave him either in the daycare or with my husband and leave to work out for an hour and then come home. There was something that was just like incongruous with my lifestyle. And it, it felt weird and it felt wrong. And I know many people do it and it's fine and I have zero judgment, but for me, it just felt awkward. And so then it was like, oh, well, I put him in the stroller and I take him for a walk or I strap him on and I take a walk around the block. So then I'm getting family time, I'm getting outdoor time, I'm getting movement time, and I'm starting to layer in all the things I need to accomplish right. in one day. So when it comes to like being around the house, and I know a lot of us have been really housebound, um, it's just like sneaking little things into your day. Um, like right now I'm doing this and I'm like facing some windows. This is the room that I've been teaching my private clients in. And you know, we're on our computers so much. So I like deliberately like look outside and then there's like a really pretty house <laughs> and I'm always looking at it like, huh, I wonder what that room is. And I'm just giving myself an eye break to like look out the window and it's just sort of ingrained into my day. Or, um, you know, like people will brush their teeth and they'll balance on one leg. I used to do shoulder stretches on my wall a lot. It's just tiny little things. Um, I really like the squatty potties or some sort of like booster for your feet yeah. for when you go to the bathroom because you're already there. So you might as well already add an extra little squat to your day. And I just, right. I love how you can almost like biohack your environment and just add these tiny little extras. And right. I really do think it's like those tiny little bits all sporadically spread out throughout your day really do make the bigger differences and trying to like cram it all into like one fail, like class. I think right. the one hour class is great. I see, I teach it all day long. So it's, I obviously fully believe in it, but I think when you have the frequency, I really do think you bring about, I don't know, a more robust result. Right. You know, it's funny. I'm going to have to put um, the squatty potty in the show notes because I mm. have them. I have them in my house. Yeah. I, um, I upgraded my bath, my master bath to a teak one. <laughs> oh, good. I want to get one of those. I'm, I just, I'm building a house right now. So I really it's want a fabulous. Teak one. The teak mm -hmm. one is fabulous. And I, I think it was probably four years ago. I gave one to each of my adult sons. Yeah, totally. It was a, it was a Christmas present. <laughs> I am brilliant. I'm a big believer big believers. So we'll have to have that in the show notes. And yeah, I mean, better than a half dome. I've given that to all my adult sons as well. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, and I have this bit of a story, because I really did learn about the nutritious movement stuff post having my son. And in like the Pilates yoga dance world, um, having a cesarean section um, birth is really prevalent. And I had, I had an emergency one with my son and I'm still on the fence with whether I really needed it or not. And mm -hmm. it was very important for me to not have one with my daughter. And so when I incorporated like everything about natural movement, adding the squatting and whatever, plus, you know, some other modalities, I was actually able to have a V back with her. And I really do th think like 90% of it was really changing my lifestyle habits. Yeah. So, um, so, and one of them being the squatty potty, right? Like that was like the first thing I switched over. And you don't even like, because I had my son and he had like a little step stool to go to the bathroom. <laughs> right. I just used that. It was already there. I was like, well, I'll just put my feet on it. And so, um, so yeah, it doesn't have to be right. something you go out and buy. It could already be in your house, like a step stool. Right. So I started out with two low garbage cans. <laughs> totally. totally. I use yoga bricks at the studio. It's kind of right. gross, but like it works. <laughs> Yeah, so true. And yeah. you, the kitchen is just full of places yeah. to add nutritious movement. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people put like props and things in their kitchen. I used to have a rock mat in my kitchen, which I love and adore. 
Um, and it ended up acting as like, I would stand on it while I was standing at the island or the kitchen sink a lot. Um, and, you know, a lot of times I just grab the counter and lean back and do a right. squat or just lean over it and do sort of like a double calf stretch. Those are kind of my biggies. I know people will put like half domes and balls. I don't mostly because my kids take them and run away with them. And so they never stay in one place. But That would be um, my dog. But it would totally be a dog. It would absolutely be a dog doing the same thing. So, uh, but then everybody started tripping over my rock mat. So then that got displaced. And I actually, my bathroom sink, we made a really pretty one that was a smoother stone. And um, so it was a little softer on the feet. And yeah. It was a white stone and it was kind of pretty. And that was what was sitting in front of my bathroom sink. And so that stayed because nobody tripped on it. And it was lovely. And it you stand on it first thing in the morning when you brush your teeth. Right. So I have a very pointy rock mm. mat. And when I saw your bathroom one, I was like, oh man, if I lived in Chicago, I'd be paying Katie to make <laughs> Pay my husband. He's the one who really, again, going to Philip Beach's workshop, he's the one who like showed us yeah. pictures of his and he had like ideas of adding handles and things. And like the first thing I did when I got home was I was like, we have to figure out how to make these. And I made a set for the studio with handles so we can move them around. And then I made a set for my home and then we got fancier and made a set for the bathroom. So they're all sitting in storage waiting waiting for waiting. me to move into this house. Right. But um, yeah, it's, again, it's tiny little changes, but I right. think they just bring about a lot of, I don't know, improved movements. I mean, some people don't understand the concept of nutritious movement. It's, it's a great sort of metaphor or analogy of, you know, we take supplements because there's, you know, food, <laughs> entire food groups that are missing in a lot of our you know, eating habits. And the same thing applies to movement. There's like whole categories of movement we're missing. And so if you think of like, interspersing these sort of like supplements of movement throughout your day, it just gives you a more well rounded movement vocabulary. And I think ultimately, you're healthier as a result of it. So what would you say are your top three for you? favorite nutritious movements for you personally? For me personally. Um, so I, I do wear minimal shoes um, and I switch the kids over to minimal shoes as well. So I do wear at this point um, and barefoot, obviously. I think that's that's what I do a lot of at this point. When I walk outside, I try to always walk on the natural terrain. So, right. you know, living in Chicago, it's mostly sidewalks. I'm always trying to walk like in the, just, just to the side of sidewalk. So I'm in a little bit of natural terrain. Um, my, my father-in-law at one point was like, do you have shin splints? And I was like, no, <laughs> like you know, when it is softer. So it does feel better on your feet ultimately, right. but you know, there's all these variant changes. There's, you know, tree roots and rocks and it's right. just, it's not flat and level. And so um, it just changes, you know, those tiny little pieces inside your feet, yeah. those tiny little bones get disrupted and changed. And I think it improves your balance and strengthen your feet ultimately. Um, and then right now I'd say the biggest one is my eye breaks of, because we're just all on our computers so much. Right. Um, either like just talking with friends or doing work from home right. that I'm just, I'm always planting myself by a window. So, and it's interesting because if you put yourself near a window, you're actually kind of likely to look out of it. <laughs> it's just sort of like, so it kind of draws your eye to yeah. it, especially like I'm watching trees moving and it sort of like just draws my eye to it. Um, and so, and I've been practicing, I've been working a little bit with like my own eyes and my own vision. Um, I think we all have some really interesting eye things going on in our oh, bodies yeah. and your eyes are connected to your brain. And so it's some really interesting neuro stuff. So I'm very interested in eyes right now. So it's like feet and eyes. It's like the two opposite right. ends of my body. But, um, but again, you don't have to buy anything to walk, you know, in the grass or look out a window. So, right. Yeah. And on the other hand, what do you think? feel from feedback your clients choose if they're trying to mm. layer in some nutritious movement what's their you nutritious get a sense movement? of what they're doing what they're most of my people walk like they're definitely walkers mm -hmm. and so that's helpful like already in and of itself um it actually has more to do with how they stand i think more than anything is um 
teaching people that when they're standing, like trying to get their feet to point more straight ahead, if you know, one foot kind of veers off to the side. Also, when they stand, like bringing the weight a little bit further back into their heels versus being so much on their toes. I have clients who tell me like, oh, I was, you know, standing in my elevator and I noticed I was like slowly leaning forward and I leaned myself back. And so there's a bit of that body awareness that I think a lot of people are starting to realize. And that to me is awesome. Because again, it's just those tiny little moments of just, you know, you're using more of your hamstrings and the backsides of your legs and giving your quads a little break and just things like that. I love, Um, I love to hear as well as like, I have some clients who are, uh, I have, I have a couple where they, um, every weekend they go and look for like a new nature preserve that's, you know, within driving distance. And it's just, it's great. I love hearing just everybody yeah. trying to get out in nature when we all live in a city. Right. So do you find any of them saying to you, squats are my new thing and I, in the kitchen and I grab the counter and when I go through, I, when I go to the stairs, I do a calf stretch. Do you, do you feel like any of them are sprinkling in things that sound a little more exercisey or no? I think, um, I would say my clients love the massage ball. Like they love to roll out their feet. I would say this ends up being a big exercise. Um, calf stretching, I would say ends up being an exercise. I have clients who have the half foam rollers and they do put them somewhere in their home and like religiously do them. Yeah. Um, my my clients too. Yeah. yeah, I would say those are probably the two biggest. Oh, and with walking of just accenting, like swinging your arms backward again, it kind of goes with like alignment, but that's another one where they're like, when I, when I walk, watch me. And then they're like swinging their arms. I'm like, that's so great. As opposed to like lifting their arms up in front of them, which I think right. is the natural inclination for so many people. So right. those, I would say those three things are the biggest. That's cool. Yeah. That's, that's really awesome. It's so yeah. awesome. It's so awesome. Yeah. And it's so accessible. I mean, that's the thing about all this work that also has kind of like led me down a new path of, you know, Pilates is great. The equipment's expensive. You know, it's highly choreographed. And it was created by a male, you know, a long, long time ago, pre real exercise science. And so as great as a lot of the moves are, a lot of them are not accessible. And then you ask, you know, you ask the same thing of gyrotonic and, you know, the inventor's still alive, but the equipment is like three times as expensive right. as is the certification. <laughs> and so it's just, and it's, even more choreographed and it's just, it feels inaccessible to the masses. And so I had inadvertently been trying to make it more accessible. And then finally I was like handed the book of like, here's accessible movement. And I'm like, thank you. This is what I've been like waiting for. Right. I, yep. I totally agree. And it's so funny because I'm reminded now that when you brought up Philip beach to me, I was like, Mm -hmm. Oh, I have that book and we yes. haven't even discussed it, but that all roads kind of lead to the same thing when you're seeking out moving better and feeling better. Yeah. It doesn't usually come in, in doesn't usually, in my opinion, come in the form of a choreographed class. No, it's, it. Yeah, but then sometimes there's still that mental hurdle. People think that's what they need. So, right. yeah, I think if we can just get the word out there that it's it's not as hard as it needs to be. It can be really simple, and it can just be so impactful. Um, yeah, I think that's sort of like what I'm hoping you, me, all of all of our colleagues start to get this word out. Yeah. Um, yeah. So where can people go to see your exercise advent? Oh, I think, uh, it, I think it's awesome. Thanks. Um, I somehow started doing reels like through um, Instagram and they somehow don't translate over to Facebook. Oh. I do have a Facebook page, but they're not showing up in my Facebook. They're just showing up in the stories. So learn oh, that funny. lesson. The hard yeah, way. Cause I was, I was, that's where I was watching them. Yeah. So um, they're mostly on my Instagram. And then they are in my stories and then the stories do swing into my Facebook. I'm going to try to figure out once I'm done, I might just post them all separately. Right. Into my Facebook that would be an post. awesome idea. And yeah. By the time this goes live, I can, I can have a link to that. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, um, in it's 24 days. So basically started on the 1st of December and then I think it finishes tomorrow. Tomorrow's the 24th of December. So, um, so yeah, so it's 24 days. Um, the theme this year was all about twisting. And so, um, I kind of took it upon myself to kind of add my own flourish, (laughs) which I totally like renamed all the names and added music (laughs) and got kind of fun about it. But, um, yeah, it, it was a really fun one. It was really fun to do. Good. Well, we will also put in the show notes how people can see more of your movement because your Instagram handle and your Facebook handle, are they different? They are. So my Instagram is the Katie Lush and um, the Instagram, or I'm sorry, the Facebook is Lush Living by Katie, I think. Um, Yeah, but you can always Google Lush Living and you'll probably find it. Or Katie Lush, you'll you'll find all of them. Exactly. Yeah, I'll come up with those links. (laughs) So so people can find you and find out more about Nutritious Movement and Lush Living. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. That's great. Well, thank you for spending your time with me. Yeah, and again, thanks for having me on your inaugural (laughs) first podcast. This is exciting. It is exciting. Well, thank you for coming. Yes. And say, we'll both say bye to all of our followers. Yes.